six-year-old girl sat down and taught me how to write a smart contract. Yeah. Six years old. Oh my goodness. I am the COO of Unstoppable. I'm also founder of a group called Unstoppable Women of Web3. Um, I recently had an accident in Brazil and it took two days to get all my medical records down so they could perform surgery on my leg in Brazil, two days. So imagine if it was in my digital identity, I could have just popped it up and shown it to them, verified it was me, how powerful that could be. Meta and Google just published a report that said that they sold our data for $200 billion. I mean, that's a lot of money. And in fact, you know, we've been arguing that that data, it's really a human right that you own the data about yourself. Like you would never give someone else say, here's my driver's license, right? I mean, you wouldn't do that. So why do we do that in our digital world? Hello, and welcome to another episode of Token Talks, brought to you as ever here from our sunny studio in Singapore where the aircon is always set to high. My name is Sam and I'll be your host for today. And I'm really excited to welcome Sandy Carter onto the show today. Hi, Sandy, welcome to the show. Hey, Sam, thank you so much for having me here in Singapore. We're actually in Singapore. I'm so excited to be here. So excited to have you on the show. Uh, I know you had a little bit of kind of travel difficulties getting here, but you made it. I did, we had two aborted takeoffs. And uh, one of them was pretty scary because we were up in the air and when they plumped down, the plane skid. So it was like, okay, I went off the plane. <laughs> Please oh let goodness. us off the plane. Well, we're extra grateful uh, in that case that, that you did make it all the way. We're familiar with each other from uh, my pre previous professional life. Uh, and I know you as COO of Unstoppable Domains. For anybody watching who doesn't know you or doesn't know Unstoppable Domains, um, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, so um, I am the COO of Unstoppable. Unstoppable is a digital identity platform. Uh, I'm also founder of a group called Unstoppable Women of Web3, which is pretty amazing. I came into Web3 about two years ago. Previously, I had been the um, VP at Amazon Web Services, and I uh, was working with lots of enterprise customers and regulated customers and partners. And uh, that's how I really went down the rabbit hole with uh, with Web3, blockchain, AR, VR, that sort of thing. So I've been in the space for, for I guess, now quite a while. I was just at, a, at an event, at a timestamp event, and uh, I told someone I had been in the, the uh, space for two years, and they were like, wow, really? That long? I was like, yeah, our company oh, was founded in 2018. Wow. They were in, really impressed, right? Whereas, you know, I worked for Amazon, who'd been in business for 50 years, and IBM, who'd been in business for 100 years. So it's just interesting seeing the perspective of people, how new our area is. Yeah, indeed. It's one of the most exciting things about it, isn't it? So if you're interested to know, for you uh, personally, was there a particular moment where you kind of had a, a wake up, uh, kind of enlightening to Web3 or blockchain? Um, was, was there a particular spark that? Yeah, well, it was interesting because at Amazon Web Services, I was working with a lot of regulated customers, and those were um, like financial institutions, hospitals, um, even Department of Defense and some government areas, and they were all using blockchain. And some were using it for, you know, for the ledger function, some were using it for security. So I went down the rabbit hole really understanding blockchain and really fell in love with blockchain with Web2 customers. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. And so as I was exploring all these Web2 customers, I was like, wow, there's this other thing out here called Web3. Let me just dabble in that. And so I started dabbling in that. And then I got asked to look at um, AR and VR, spatial computing. And that was really fascinating how, you know, um, healthcare was using it for training and that sort of thing. And But then that led me from Web 2 to the metaverse and how people were using it in the metaverse. So I started doing all these little side projects just because I was diving deep for my Web 2 customers, but seeing all these other use cases. And that's really how I got started looking at it. And of course, then I you know, got my own wallet, got my own NFTs, and just started playing around. Amazing, okay. So you've really been on the journey of, of uh, working with Web 2 companies, helping them evolve in the space. And now obviously at, at Unstoppable, I think, something I'm really impressed by what you guys are working on is the way you bring so many different kind of, I guess, parts of the ecosystem, certainly within Web3, but also in Web2, around kind of a common vision. Um, I guess a lot of that is related to identity and digital ident identity, but I'd love to hear from you kind of what exactly is it you guys do at Unstoppable Domains and why is it important? 
Yeah, well, obviously, we think it's really important because it's all around digital identity. And that means that in Web3, you own your own data and you own your own identity. And that's not the way it is in Web2, right? So if you think about the way you log into Google or Meta or X today, two of those just rebranded, right? So Facebook or, <laughs> or Twitter, if you're not up to speed. Um, when you log in with your username and password, you think you own that and you don't. And you know you don't own your data, right? Um, Meta and Google just published a report that said that they sold our data for $200 billion. I mean, that's a lot of money. And so um, as you're thinking about that, the other interesting thing is when Twitter rebranded to X, somebody had the digital identity of X on Twitter, but Elon Musk wanted it. And so they just took it mm -hmm. away from him, right? Because it really wasn't his to start with. And so now... Eon has it, right? And so in Web3, once you get your digital identity, which is represented by a domain like sandy.x, for example, or sandy.nft, you own that identity. Now you can log into any application, not just the platform that that, that username and identity was attached to, but more importantly, all the data that's collected about you, you also own. I think that's really important. And in fact, you know, we've been arguing that that data, it's really a human right that you own the data about yourself. You Like you would never give someone else, say, here's my driver's license, right? Or here's the, I mean, you wouldn't do that. So why do we do that in our digital world? Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Exactly. And I think that the Elon, the Elon X uh, case you brought up is a perfect example of that. Um, so... Data on Unstoppable then, or data that's that is connected or um, yeah, is related to your Unstoppable domain identity. What kind of data are we talking about? What types of data? Well, so it could be my avatar that I use, and you know, any. So today we partner with Ready Player Me, so it could be any of the seven thousand metaverses that use Ready Player Me. Um, we're talking about your, you know, your NFTs, or your if you're not with Web three, that would be like a digital collectible. And that could have in it, you know, your causes like, um, you know, I support the climate or I support women of Web3 or, you know, I'm a car lover. I support Formula One. Um, it could be anything, any data like that. But it could also be, you know, connections, um, data about your email, um, your birthday, your nationality, mm -hmm. any of those things as well. That's why things like zero proof are so important because what they do is they enable you to share the type of information without sharing the information. So the great example that we always use is, you know, if I want to know that you're over 18, so I'm not sure, Sam, if you are mm -hmm. over 18, <laughs> but, you know, I can, you can identify that you are over 18 without giving me your exact mm -hmm. birthday. And that, I think, is a very powerful concept. And that's why I think zero proof is going to become very important as we move forward. Yeah, I completely agree. It's fascinating how, how fast that's picked up as well. Right? It's a technology that, or at least conceptually, was invented a long time ago, I think in the 1980s. And then suddenly we're seeing it being adopted by so many protocols. And it's, yeah. It's really interesting how quickly that's picked up. Speaking of which, whilst you're here in Singapore, uh, of course you'll be um, representing Unstoppable Domains and I'm sure meeting a whole bunch of your partners and friends from the community. But I know you're also involved with um, the Unstoppable Women of Web3. Uh, maybe you could explain a little bit about uh, that for anybody who's watching. Yeah, so um, so when I came into Web3, so first of all, all the first meetings I had, I would say for the first two months, I didn't see another female, which was shocking <laughs> to me. I'd come from Amazon Web Services. Like, we're really technical. And still, you know, 25% of the folks are women, which I still thought was too low. So I started doing some research on it and found that in emerging tech spaces, the numbers are even lower. So only 15% of those in AI are female. Only 8% of those in crypto are female. So I mean, it's low. super wow. low. It's like ridiculously low. And then I think what really got me is um, the New York Times did an article about me coming over. So we started getting tons of applicants. And I started looking at them. 2% were females. 2%. Mm. That was that blew me away because at Amazon, we would do advertisements for people. And we get like 40% women that would apply. So I thought something's wrong, something's not right. 
And so as I started talking to women, they were like, well, what the hell is Web3 anyway? Like, I don't know. And your job description, it says, you know, must be interested in Web3. Well, I don't know what it is. How can mm -hmm. I be interested in it? And uh, the same thing went for what is blockchain? What is metaverse? And so um, I decided to found a group because everybody kept saying, yes, yeah, somebody should do something about this. I'm like, OK, I guess I'm somebody. So I founded a group called Unstoppable Women of Web3. And the goal was to educate women, make it accessible to everyone, anybody. And I still remember I took this to our CEO and we were like, could we get 20 companies to join us? We might be able to get 20 companies. Uh, when we announced uh, two years ago, we actually ended up with 80. Now we have 210 Amazing. companies here with us. So it's really for companies to come in. They have to sign a pledge um, that says that they commit to, like when you do interviews, you're going to interview women and men. When you have keynotes, you're going to have women and men. When you do your education material, like everything will be inclusive is essentially what you sign. And um, I've had companies, some big companies who've signed who said, that was actually harder getting that document signed than giving you $10,000. Yeah. We don't ask for any money. We just ask them to sign the pledge. Um, and I even remember there's one company who um, who came to us and they said, look at our look at our education. Our education is so amazing. You're going to find it great. So we went through a lot of their education was fabulous until we went to this through this one section on blockchain. And every blockchain developer was a white male. Everyone in hoodies, like I know not all white males wear hoodies either, all of them under 25. And we were like, okay, where are the women? Where are the you know African American men? Okay, where are the men over 30? Like you've got like you've got a lot of work to do here. So we had you know we had some fun with it too. So um, eventually, instead of just doing education, so we have all these education tracks and streams, which are super important. And then what I started what started happening is I was speaking at a lot of conferences. And the conference head of the conference would call me and say, I wish I could have more women speak, but there just aren't any. So I was like, OK, what it, have you called? Blah, 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 blah. And they're like, oh, no, thank you. So then all these conference leaders started calling me. That's not scalable. So we decided to publish a list of the 100 most inspirational women of Web3. And so we did that. We did it twice the first year because there were so many amazing women. And we continue to do it because one of my favorite things is if you can see it, you can be it, right? So if a young girl's out there and she sees, you know, um, let's say she sees Debbie Soon who started Hug, then she knows she can do it. Or if she sees Jessica who's running a big portion of the Coinbase business, then she can do it too. And so we're going to make an announcement here in Singapore. We'll have some of the ladies that will be here in person, and we'll get to announce the list and have them there in person. So I'm just real excited that we get to do it here in Singapore, and we have such diversity on the list of all these amazing women who are doing some cool things in Web3. And then the other thing that we did as well mm. is we are also announcing the top 55 girls of Web3. And we did this so that the next generation could be rewarded as well. We did our first set of girls. We did 25 girls last year. And I was, Sam, oh my God. So six-year-old girl, now think about back when you were six, six-year-old girl, sat down and taught me how to write a smart contract. Yeah. Six years old. Oh my goodness. What were you doing at six? Like yeah. I was playing on a playground. Like <laughs> no way was I writing a smart contract. And so we have 55 girls. And we partnered with um, Flipkart, who is, you know, like the uh, Amazon of India, Asia. Uh, we partnered with Miss O Cool Girls, which is a very powerful group that teaches young girls how to do NFTs. We partnered with um, 100 Girls of Blockchain, which is based in India as well. And then uh, Blockchain is partnering with us on the party to do the announcement. So again, it's just so many amazing groups, Web2, as well as Web3, that have come together to really drive this initiative. Yeah, so cool. And this is going to be a really naive question, I'm sure. Uh, but what what are the barriers that have prevented um, girls and women from getting into Web3? Is it... That you know, tradition. This is my, I guess, mm -hmm. naive mm -hmm. guess, right? Is it that uh, you know, blockchain typically is kind of a technical space, which maybe attracted engineers engineers to begin with, and that's traditionally been dominated by males? Or you know, what, what's the what's the root cause? Yeah. Well, here's one which is mm. really fascinating. So um, most emerging tech has fewer diverse candidates in it. 
And a lot of the reason is that men will apply for a role. Let's say there are 10 requirements. Uh, and Google did the study, so mm. it's a formal study, that if there's 10 requirements, men will apply if they have four of the 10. And they'll be like, you should definitely hire me. Like, I've got four of these 10 mm. things. Women and diverse candidates will only apply for the role if they have 10 of the 10. Mm. So when we write roles that say, must have an interest in Web3, and they're like, oh my God, I don't even know what Web3 is, I can't apply or must understand or have, must have used blockchain technology. Um, you know, we've evaluated a lot of job descriptions before. A lot of the way the job description's written up with the tendency of women and how they look at those, they were just eliminated. Right. They eliminate themselves right, right. away. Mm -hmm. That's one of it. Mm -hmm. And then the second is, you know, is that technical barrier. So that's why on the, we have a Unstoppable Women of Web3 site. We've got streams of education that you can take that's free. It's um, video, it's white papers, it's audio, because people learn differently. So we wanted to have a really good mix of all of those and open it up. You, we don't charge for anything. Like, for example, Alchemy donated a whole set of blockchain classes. They just gave them to us. So we can use those for free. Mm -hmm. So anybody can now go out and learn about blockchain, for example. Um, we did initiatives with uh, Latin America. Uh, to get uh, 5 million Latin America women trained, 6 million African women trained. So we're trying to also make things customizable to region because obviously if you're in Latin America, you want things in Spanish. So we have Spanish classes. If you're in Africa, you know, African has a lot of French influence. You want things mm -hmm. in French and Arabic. And so we're really trying to meet the needs of all these all these women around the world. And, and here's why it's so important. It's not just because it's a good thing. It's not just because, oh, yeah, we have a woman on our team. You know, diversity has been proven over and over again, whether you look at a McKinsey study, a Deloitte study, an IDC study. Um, all those studies show that if you have a diverse team, you innovate faster, you have more broad-reaching ideas, and you get more widespread adoption. Where are we today? We don't have widespread adoption. So we need more diversity of ideas. And that's really the goal, right? There is a business case for having diverse teams. It's not just a nice to have or a great check mark. It is a business case to have diverse teams. Yeah, fantastic. Well, listen, I wish you all the best with Unstoppable Women of Web3. I know that our team will certainly be um, supporting this week. Yeah, and, uh, and all the best with the announcement as well. Thank you. Um, let's bring it back to Unstoppable, I guess. Just mm -hmm. what is going on at Unstoppable Domains at the moment? You know, I, I, I keep pretty close track of everything that you guys are doing. It seems like there's a new exciting partnership every week. Uh, and you can see also in terms of the um, the experiences that you're building out, they're, they're beginning to involve even more as well. But um, yeah, what's, what's new at Unstoppable? Yeah, so we've got a lot of new things. Um, so one is that we want to be the one-stop shop for buying your Web3 digital identity or domain. So we've recently started supporting and selling .eth. And that has blown people away because, you know, we're number one. We've got 3.8 million domains out there. Um, they're number two. But we are now selling it and not just selling it, but making it better. You can now buy .eth for a credit card or PayPal, which you've never been able to do before. You can buy it in bulk. You don't have to have a wallet. I know that might be heresy, but you don't have to have a wallet. You can store it in a vault until you figure out how to get a wallet. Um, and so all these really cool things, I think, make it much more um, easy to buy something in a one-stop shop. So that's one. Um, that includes .sats. We also just decided to buy .sats yeah. with the ordinals. <laughs> yep. So we now have that going on, too. And you'll see more and more additions to that one-stop shop, if you would. Um, the second thing is we're looking for more utility as well. And one of the things that we really believe is that when people look back, they will look back and they'll say, of course, a digital identity should be a domain in the new internet. And when they do that, I think something that will prod that forward is the ability to have an application that you can use every day, like messaging. So we just released peer-to-peer -peer messaging, which means that I can now message you with my domain. Um, I can not only message you with a domain, but I can also message certain wallet providers or like Lynn's protocol. I can also message them. And so now, how often do you message people like every day? Mm -hmm. And so that gives you an application you can use constantly. Um, 
And one of the things I did, I have the um, customer support team under me as well. I wanted to drink our own champagne. And so we developed an application using messaging for customer support. So we had over a thousand requests come in using messaging versus email. Now that made my team happy because they didn't have to go create a ticket, but it also made our users happy because they got instant answers versus waiting for the email to come in, filing a ticket, responding. Um, and so that again, just gives you another application. Uh, we're announcing here in Singapore, actually today on this very day, we're also announcing business to user messaging, which I think is even gonna mm. be bigger. So what does that mean? Well, I'm Polygon, so Sandeep is gonna send the very first business to user message, and he'll be able to message everybody who has a dot Polygon. Or, you know, we've got Meta Rides, who is a metaverse car racing game. They can message everybody who has qualified for their badge. Or blockchain.com, which is one of the largest US exchanges. Lane, who is their president, is going to be able to message all of their folks too. So we are announcing that here in Singapore, which we think is really important for utility and, and you know, really driving that forward. Um, the other thing we want to do is make domains accessible to everyone. So also announcing today is we're going to make our domains accessible for many places in Asia that before they were unaccessible for because of the price. So we're going to do $2 domains. So lowest price we've ever gone. And as my CEO said, we'll be the lowest price we'll ever go. <laughs> but we're going to uh, roll that out with dot polygon. So with Sendeep and the polygon team, we'll be rolling out a dot polygon. So for the next couple of weeks, you can get your dot polygon for $2, making it accessible. Our mission is to put a digital identity in the hands of every person. And if the price is too much, you can't reach that mission. And so what we wanted to really do is to make that you know, really, um, really, I don't know what happened there. Sandy. <laughs> Maybe it was <laughs> Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, make that really accessible to everyone. And then we'll also be making an announcement uh, with Sandbox. So we're going to partner with Sandbox. Sandbox, you know, uh, the Sandbox has tons of games. And we're going to create with Smolder Labs and, and Design Studio a unstoppable experience. So you'll be able to go in and get a domain, but also a shield with unstoppable or a sword with unstoppable and have some fun with it. Again, back to that utility and accessibility. Uh, and so that's really what we've been working on and really trying to make sure that we have utility. We believe utility is greater than hype. Make it easy with our one-stop shop and then make it accessible in terms of the pricing. Amazing. You guys have been very, very busy. It sounds we like, have been uh, very busy. <laughs> <laughs> and some serious alpha we got here. You heard it here first uh, this week <laughs> yeah, right. in Singapore. So Sandy, one of the things that I love about uh, everything you could do at Unstoppable Domains is the community and how passionate everybody is. And um, I would love to hear a little bit about what's going on in the community right now, what everybody's excited about. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, everybody's excited about us being the one-stop shop because they wanted to buy .eth and .sats from one owner, I guess I would say, or one one uh, website. So they're real super excited about that. I would say the other thing is they love our partnerships. Like every time we announce a new partnership, they're like, whoa, um, because it gives them more utility, right? Utility is greater than hype. So it just adds that one additional thing. Um, and in fact, I was thinking as we were sitting here, we should do some sort of partnership too. We totally should, yeah. And uh, actually, it's, I, have a, I have a hidden agenda given, given you're in town with your team. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's imagine that for a minute. So if, uh, if Bake and Unstoppable were to do a partnership, um, what could that look like? Um, so maybe let me tell you a little bit about Bake first. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we're evolving our product at the moment. So it will essentially become a, um, a marketplace for financial services. So essentially we'll provide the blank canvas upon which other um, projects, be that um, tokens or to real world tokenized assets or something completely else uh, can, can launch. And then we'll build up narratives kind of a little bit like the way the app store does uh, and users will be able to engage with those different na narratives. Some of them even maybe bundled up. So you might be able to buy a bundle of Bitcoin, Ethereum and T-bills, for example. Mm -hmm. um, it's a retail app and we've probably got about a million users on it. Uh, and also wow. a very passionate community. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Well, it sounds like a great match. I mean, some of the things that I would think of is you could bundle a domain and with your assets that you're buying. We had actually um, 
talked about doing something like this, like call it a backpack, like a starter kit, mm -hmm. like a Web3 starter kit, right? Give, give a Web2 user a domain, give them some Ethereum, give them some Bitcoin so they can get started really easy, not make it so hard. Right. Yeah, it's kind of exactly where the, where the uh, I guess, the product uh, spark came from, because we realized that uh, everybody says do your own research, but that's not that easy, right? Mm. Uh, you, even for the most kind of experienced and technically savvy people to actually sit down and really understand um, how legitimate a project is, the future potential of a project, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's kind of a complicated landscape. So definitely, I think people suffer from information overload. So our goal is kind of to simplify that and to provide these these narratives and these stories that can help people uh, understand a little bit more without having to go quite so deep. So, yeah, I yeah. love that. I think that would be great. I mean, the other thing is we also because you know, you can take sandy.x and log in to lots of different places, we could do something where we could do a login capability for your marketplace, making it easier for your users. So I don't have to log in with a wallet address, you know, 21 alphanumerics and forget one or something, or have to log in with a web two, like gas web two way, right? Yeah. Um, we've had a couple of marketplaces, you know, they would have a Google sign in or, you know, something like that, which is a web two way to sign in and their users revolted and they asked for an unstoppable domain way to log in. So I think we could do lots of cool things. We could even if your community is that passionate, and you have a million folks, we could even do like a, a dot, I, I don't know if it's available, but dot bake or dot something like we did for dot polygon, yeah. where they have their own signature way of d identifying their community and their community can really get excited. So any of those kind of things would be quite interesting to yeah. chat about too. I'm sure the bake community would love a, a <laughs> yeah. bake domain. Yeah. yeah. I think they refer to that we, or we refer to ourselves as bakers. So uh, yeah. Oh, go, that's go down cool. The I like it. Yeah. I like so hey, it. if we have 10 minutes after this, this call, let's definitely, uh, let's definitely talk more. Okay. That sounds uh, good. In you the, may have first heard it here. Yeah. More <laughs> alpha. Is that like the four things? <laughs> If you enjoyed today's episode, please do remember to like and subscribe. Uh, there's lots more episodes coming up and we've got some really exciting guests over the next few weeks. So do tune in. Thank you.